basically, and I'm going to show you not only this type of stuff, but I'm also going to show you um, on the model if we need to okay. as well. But out of your neck, we all know that we have the nerves that come down, and then the nerves that go down into from out of the neck also go down and into the arms. So I we'll, had no oh, idea there were that many. Oh, yeah. Really. Yeah. There's also a whole plexus. They call them the brachial plexus. We also have the lumbar plexus okay. of the low back. So basically what I do, or what I just did with you, when I did that weird I, handshake one and I was like doing this, and I did the same darn thing with your foot. It was like this, 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 this. Not only am I testing for range of motion of your neck and shoulder and the elbow and what it can do, because some people will be like, hey, I'm, I'm good. And I'm like, what's wrong with your elbow? You can't bend it. Uh, so I'm testing for full ranges of motion, but I'm also trying to do this. I'm trying to take the nerve that I told you doesn't like to be stretched, and I'm literally pulling it down. And a nerve that doesn't like to be stretched, AKA this position, which is what you said twice to me, like, hey, it's starting to come on. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And then I, if you noticed for a while, I stopped. I put your arm into a bent position. We sat there and talked. And then it went away, and then I did it again. And I did it no, again. Mm -hmm. And so repeatedly, I, I pulled down on these nerves uh, a couple of different distributions. Surprisingly, the radial one wasn't uh, upset, which is the one that we did this. Yeah. Surprisingly one. If, if you ask me personally which one it, it is, I think it's going to be the radial nerve that's affected because the radial nerve courses this direction with these hands. However, when you have a nerve root injured or upset or pissed off, what's going to happen is it's going to affect multiple distributions. So just think about it like the highway that you may have took it, taken to get here. If one road is congested, it's going to spill over and affect other parts of that, right? So if we have, let's just click on this nerve for a second, the C, uh, C6 spinal nerve, look at like how we see the upper trunk. Immediately we go from five here, or six here, right to this upper trunk, but look at the division of the upper trunk. It includes not just five and six, it includes, I mean, just not just six, it includes five and six. Right, and then we come down to this area, which if this is already irritated, you have the anterior division. Well, that includes five, six, and seven. So you really have like a, uh, I guess you could say a spillover effect, almost like a, a backup generator, right? So if one nerve, so to speak, gets cut off, you're gonna have some other distributions that supply power to that. It's a very ingenious way of the body being designed however you want to call that, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's really unique. So that's one reason why when somebody has a nerve root injury to one area, you can still have symptoms going on here or here or here. And then like sometimes I'll do one, you're like, that doesn't really irritate it because maybe it's just affecting this direction. It's just not really irritated there, but it's maybe more irritated there. Uh, it seemed like when I put your, your neck chin to your or neck this direction, it kind of slowed it up, which tells me that what we're doing is when we pull down on the nerve going this direction and we bend your neck this way, we're giving a nice little slack into that nerve. And then when we do that, um, it allows us to slow, like glide that nerve down a little bit further and that allows sometimes some irritation to go away. In your case, I don't think it provided that much relief mm -hmm. because I think it's just really, really ticked off. Okay. And I could say that confidently because when we rotated your spine, let me go in this one now, when we rotated your spine going to the left, sorry, to the, yeah, to the left. left, what we do is we kind of pull, we, we kind of like smush this direction. When you bend laterally, so right ear to right shoulder, when we bend away, we actually open up that nerve hole here. So when you bend in this direction, you compress that nerve, okay. and that's what's happening. If you ask me personally, like, um, I'm sure you've heard about disc herniations and disc bulges and mm -hmm. stuff like that. If you, statistically speaking, you probably have one. Statistically speaking, I have one. Um, I already know I have one, actually. Uh, but statistically speaking, everybody has one. But do you, are you coming up positive for it? No. You're not having full onset, like full blown herniation with it kind of compressing to the nerve route. Okay. But you're having nerve irritation, probably from an old compression, and then when you did it, you just had an acute exacerbation of some sort of issue there.
if that makes sense, right? It does, and I, and I repeated it from when I did the sh taking the shirt thing off. Weird. We, we all have it. Uh, well, so weird. It's, it's very unique. I find a lot of times, and this is just my opinion on this one, is that most of the nerve irritation that we get, again, the, we have uh, down the shoulder blade, with that shoulder blade pain, it's mostly a dorsal scapular nerve issue. That's just my opinion on that, it, because if you came up positive with all this type of this stuff going on, the direct branch of that C5 nerve route, right off the back of the neck, is the dorsal scapular nerve. And if we look at where that goes, this goes right down that medial border, huh. right there, and it uh -huh. innervates all these muscles. That's one of the reasons why I was like messing around back there, and I was like, hey, because here's the rhomboids, and, and well, the rhomboids kind of go this direction, and there's the minor, but if we kind of can do it this way. But here's the upper trap. The upper trap, here's that nerve right there. Yeah. So here's the minor, sorry, and major there. And you have the levator there, but I do I do think that like when you have that irritation down here, a lot of people get that nerve route irritated. So what we'll do is we'll see this type of presentation where if we follow this nerve back, look at where it stems right off of. So a lot of people also ask, well, that doesn't that kind of make sense, but then like, well, what's the reason that you know like why is this one irritated and why isn't it just this one it, but it, it has all to do with just mechanics and movement and inflammation and like when you piss off one little area by the way these areas are only like this far away from each other so when you have like a dysfunction of the neck movement in here you're going to have irritation and inflammation um true fun fact we in this one clinic i used to work in we used to do a lot of major testing um which is one reason why i don't do a lot of major testing anymore it's just because like it's not always the most valid. You mean by like x-rays like, and X-rays, MRIs, MRIs and, okay. and we used to like make sure every almost everybody got some sort of test before they came in. We don't do that anymore. One, it's not the standard of care. Uh, it's too invasive in my opinion. And three, uh, if a good if you take the time with an individual, you can really figure out what's going on, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't take this much time back then, but uh, but now we do. Um, and so what we found is that like sometimes people will have a disc herniation on their left side and then you you would come in like oh yeah I have disc herniation on my left side it's going down the down the arm on the left correct then we take the other person numbness and tingling all the way down the left arm and you look at it there's either no disc herniation or there's a disc herniation at the lower level on the opposite side and you're like well what how the, how the heck can that happen and the research is now caught up with that and so you know that was like 10 15 years ago the research is caught up with that and it says now you can't always correlate your presentation with the actual uh, clinical symptoms and, and the image meaning you're not an image um, but i liked in the lower back you're not have even though you may have had sciatica you don't have currently like anything that bears uh any resemblance of it i did do the same thing with the net uh, with the legs and putting you in these weird funky directions where what we're doing in this case we're pulling down from the sciatic nerve all the way down to the hamstring as well and you see how they they split right here mm -hmm. we're literally splitting and pulling down this direction this direction and we're changing the angles to see if we can irritate the nerve on both sides you have just better range of motion on this side so I think there, that has more to do with like the arthritic potential arthritic hip and if I watched you walk I'm sure we could probably see you kind of like not have as good of a gait going up and down on that side um, and, um, and we may even have to watch you walk okay. for that um, so I do think like if if it were to be like hey work on my lower back and work on my hip on the I would work on the right side and I would work way a lot on the left side for, for your neck and upper back um, does that make sense so far? So far it makes sense, yes. Okay. So I do a lot of manual work. Um, I do a lot of hands-on work to help release the nerves and stuff like that. And then of okay. course, we're, it's it's sometimes comfortable. Hey, sometimes I was about to say, this sounds like could be painful, but you know what? No, it should it be very like tender but tolerable. Okay. Uh, but you should be able to be like, okay, I can deal with that. But I should not be exacerbating your symptoms at this point in time. Okay, fair. And yeah. if you feel like I have, as long as, like, there used to be a rule of thumb, it's like, if I do something to you, 
and you feel it increase it immediately and I'm just saying and you know it's from me, you gotta let me know. I can't read your mind, not yet. Um, and so <laughs> what we'll try to do is really just understand where this is coming from and then what we can do to help it. Uh, because you're not having true disc related issues. You're having nerve tension issues that are probably from an old disc. Okay. Um, again, we all have them, but. I had my, because of the lower back pain uh, a few years ago, my general MD doctor, who's a DO. Oh, cool. Spinal, did a spinal x ray. And she said, um, she said, your spine looks better than most of the doctors here because she's funny, right? But she said I had a tiny, very small, I don't remember if it was lower back though, whether it was a compression or a bulge, I can't remember now. But there was something, but she said it was really minor. It could be. And that and that's the beauty about like imaging. It's like it gives you some data, but it doesn't tell you the whole clinical yeah, story. I didn't know if that would help you. That's why I told it does. you. And since it was a few years ago, I don't even know if it's still relevant. Or it not. is. Okay. It is. Ninety five percent of low lower spine, meaning lumbar spine herniations or or disc issues or compressions are between L five and S one. So meaning like again, if we said the whole thing you have to leave in five minutes where am I going to focus my time on? Statistically speaking, there's 5% of L1, L2, L3, L4 that are going to be the issues. I'm really going to focus on L5, S1. But it also makes sense because like, look at where the lower plexus of nerves are. They're really at the lower level. You know I mean? Wow. Like we really yeah. start seeing a lot more embedding of the lumbosacral trunk and the, and the sacral plexus all through the, these areas and the lower you know, in the middle, middle to lower area. So we get the L5 and the S1 in the lower area. So something to note right there. And so 